SSRS Architecture Overview. In this nugget, we're going to talk about the architecture of SQL Server reporting services. We're going to be looking at the basic components of SSRS architecture so you understand the basics, so then in the next few nuggets we can go into more advanced material. We're going to create a simple report, and then we'll implement drill down as well as creating a drill through report and then embedding a sub report into a parent report. After we create our reports, we're going to perform a simple deployment and we'll also talk about the credentials when it comes to your data source. After we deploy our reports, then we can view them in the report server and once again, we'll discuss some of the security issues. In our report server, we can configure caching as well as report snapshots and also subscriptions, so end users can get up-to-date reports on a regular basis. Let's review our SSRS architecture a little bit. See here on the left-hand side, we have clients that might be tapping into our reporting services. We have a couple different ways of communicating with the report processor. We can go through programming interfaces such as the SOAP API, or we can go through the report manager. From the report manager, which is accessed through a browser, you can then see your different re reports that are available. If you are using the report manager, then it will in turn communicate with the programming interface, which then communicates with the report processor. Remember to go into your control panel, administrative tools, services, to make sure that your SQL Server service is up and running, as well as the reporting service. The report processor uses scheduling for various things, such as scheduling snapshots or scheduling subscriptions. So it can be one-time scheduling or it can be something on a regular schedule every morning, every week, whatever you configure. All the metadata regarding your ports is stored in a report server database and there's also a report server temp database for any of the SSRS temporary information such as caching. We also have here extensions, which is essentially a .NET assembly, and it's invoked by the report processor. Now there's several types of extensions, for example, uh, delivery, data processing, rendering, security, and so on. We're gonna start off with a simple report. We'll also look at parameterized reports, as well as sub-reports, and then we're gonna deploy it. And then we'll look at those reports from the perspective of the end user through a web browser. Before we carry on with more advanced features of SSRS, let's just do a little bit of review of reports. So I'm just going to create a new project in here under File New. And I'll just make sure it's a report server project. And I'll just say Reports Review. Call it anything you want to. And under our shared data sources, I'm going to, and under Reports, I'm going to add a new report. So here I'm creating a new data source and this is Microsoft SQL Server as opposed to some other flavor of database. And we'll make this shared so it can be reused. We need to have a connection string there, so I'm gonna edit this, and my server name is Julie1, it could be different for you. I'm gonna use Windows Authentication, and my database name is right in here, AdventureWorks DW2008. And then we can test the connection, and it's good. Hit Next, and now I'm going to build my query. We're going to start off by using our report wizard, and one of the options in there is to create a drill down report. So really, we just have to follow the wizard, and it creates drill down for us. Then we're going to do a drill through report, and then a sub report. So here, I'll just right click on here and add my table. I'll just make this a really simple one. I'll call this dim geography, add that table. I'd like to gather information about the internet sales but you'll see that there really is no connection between these uh, two tables here. But if I add the um, customer table, it's the go-between essentially. So you'll see that the foreign keys are autom automatically tacked on there. So you see the lines there connecting them? Okay, so now I'm going to select the columns that I'm interested in displaying. I'd like to display the English country region name as well as the state province name and the city. 
and I'm not interested in any of the customer information. The whole purpose of the customer information is to provide the foreign keys. But I am interested in the sales in my fact internet sales table. So um, I don't care about displaying the sales order number or the sales order line number, but I do want to display the sales amount and the tax amount. And we can even perform sums on those. Remember, if you're using aggregate functions, that you'll have to do a group by clause in your query. So I can just go down here and modify things. Here's my sales amount right here. I'll put the word sum around there. Close this off with the parentheses. And do the same thing with the tax information. And then I'll do my group by. OK, get rid of that trailing comma right there. And that should be good. Now, if we want to add an order by clause as well, you can do that. I'm going to hit Next. We can specify tabular or matrix. I'll go with tabular. And I'm not going to put anything on each page. I'm just going to put everything on the same page. And I'll group by the region, state, and city. And then the details are expression 1 and expression 2. I could have renamed those to the sum of the sales and sum of the tax. You can always go back and modify that. And here's the key. We want to enable drill down. So let's stick with slate for the look and feel. And we'll just call this sales by region. Hit finish. And now we can preview this. You'll see that we have this plus right here, which lets us expand. So that's what the drill down means. We're drilling down to the next category. If you look in the design section, you'll see that this is all implemented through row groups down here. So you can always make modifications to those. As I mentioned, if you want to rename these, you can always right click on these and modify the field properties. For right now, I'll leave them just like they are. Now the next thing I want to show you is drill through. That's when you have an original report then you click on a link in that report, and it takes you to yet another report. It's like a child report. So let's start off with this existing report that we have right here. Everything looks just fine. And you'll see here that here's the total sales right here. Now what I'd like to do is click on this numeric value right here, which is the total sales and uh, total tax for that particular city, and I'd like to see a more detailed report. So we'll create a separate report, and it's going to have a query parameter in there. Let's right click under Reports. We'll add a new report, and we'll just uh, use our Query Builder. Right click on here. We're going to add tables. Our query is just going to look a little bit different this time. Let's add that. Let's add our customer, and then let's add our fact internet sales. Same three tables we're interested in. Okay, so we want to get the detailed information. So we're going to select the sales order number, sales order line number. And here, let's put in, for example, the order quantity, unit price, total product cost, sales amount, and tax amount. Now, we need to have our query parameter. So we're going to have a where clause in here. We'll say where. We're grabbing our geography key. Just copy that right there. Equals, put an at sign, and let's just call it geo key. Now our parent report is going to be populating this geo key right here. I'll hit OK. Now if there's a syntax error, it'll let you know. We hit Next. And we'll make this one tabular as well. And let's just put all of these in the details. Once again, do slate. And let's call this report sales details by city. Hit your finish button. Now when we click on preview, you'll see that it prompts us for a geography key. I happen to know that there's a geography key of two, so I can plug that in manually just to make sure that this portion is working. And it looks like it's working just fine. OK, so now I can go to my other report right here. Make sure I go into design mode. We want our link to be in this 
first expression right here. So make sure you look at the properties right there, text box properties. And right here we're going to go to Action and we're going to go to a report. Which report is it? Well, it's Sales Details by City and we're going to add a parameter. Look at that, it's automatically populated for us. We're going to populate it with the geography key. Now notice that the geography key isn't in there. So how are we going to add it? Well, it's easy. What you can do is right click on your data set right here and go to your query and we can just add it there. You can manually type it in or you can drag and drop. It's up to you. Make sure you also add that to the group by clause. So right in here, go ahead and select this. And then go down here, paste it, put a comma in there, and now we should be fine. So now when we right click on here and we go to our text box properties under action, once again, we'll go to our report, go to the details by city, and we will add the geography key. Now, if we want to test this, not a problem. Just click on preview, and let's drill down to one of these values right here. See how we have a link now? You can click on that and see the results. So that was a drill through report. The child report replaces the parent report in the view. You can also choose to have a report include another report, and that's called a subreport. What I'm going to do is simply modify my existing report. So I'm going to go to my sales by region right here. We'll go into design mode. I've decided I'm going to get rid of this tax column right here, and I'm also going to rename my other column. We'll call this sales. Now instead of having that simple expression in there, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we can go to our toolbox, and you'll see here that we have subreport that we can just drag right in here. Then when we right click on here and go to our subreport properties, we can specify which report to link to. So we can go to the details by city, and then we can specify parameters. So I'll just go in here and say add. Here's my geo key. And here's my geography key right here. And now when I run this, it might take a little bit longer to run because it's calculating uh, both of those reports at the same time and uh, putting one into the other. So here we can go ahead and expand this. Here's New South Wales, Coffs Harbor, and look at this. We've got a subreport. Once again, you can go in here and pretty things up, but those are the basic mechanics of subreports. Now that we have a report, let's go ahead and deploy it so it can be accessible by end users. So all we need to do is make sure that you right click on here, make sure you go to your properties, and here for the target server URL, if it's not populated, make sure that you do populate it. Uh, it's going to be the server name, or if it's on the local host, you can say local host or even 127.001, followed by the port number that this is residing on. Now, now out of the box, by default, it's on port 8080, uh, but in my case, I already had something running on that port, so I changed it to 8079 within my IIS configuration. And then slash report server. So that is your URL that's going to be accessed. So I'm just going to hit OK on that and then just open up a web browser and you're going to type that in the URL box right up here. The only difference here is that instead of saying report server, you're just going to say reports and it will automatically take you here. Okay, so we can go ahead and right click here and deploy it. Once you deploy it, then you'll be able to see it on the web page. I can go ahead and hit refresh right here, and now you'll see that there's my data source as well as the reports review project. Here's my sales by region. There's my report. I can expand this. And 
and you'll see that uh, everything looks just fine. You can expand that to see the sub report. Mm -hmm.